Uh, so I'll start by going back to the beginning of ARC work, our first meeting in Vilnius when uh, Laujikas uh, presented this model to help us define topics and research questions that uh, VG3, the, our working group, is interested in. And I immediately find, uh, found two uh, areas. One is in education, because I'm actually teaching knowledge management in management school. I'm not archaeologist. So I use archaeology as a context. And I can tell you that my students love that. It's very different from, let's say, finance or you know, business-like. They like it. So, uh, but I haven't uh, uh, published any work in that yet, although I have some data collected. Uh, today I'm presenting this other interest of relationship between arts and archaeology. And in particular, this one uh, Bosnian uh, archaeological artifact, which is UNESCO listed. Um, it is called Stechci, it's a plural. Um, they are medieval tombstones. They are monumental couple of tons of uh, weight. They have uh, very varied uh, um, decorations, uh, figurative, vegetal, heavenly bodies, and they have also inscriptions in um, uh, old uh, Bosnian alphabet, Cyrillic alphabet called Bosančica. So this is now uh, one of the most important uh, uh, archaeological artifacts that everybody is trying to uh, to use somehow. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that actually only now this this picture appeared. Okay, so these are these uh, ar archaeological artifacts that I was trying to use um, and see how artists are inspired by these. A um, couple of more things about stage C. Uh, they are, these are only those that are UNESCO listed, 28 of those. But there are 3,000, maybe more, uh, necropolises throughout Bosnia and also now splitting into, spilling into ne neighboring countries. And uh, uh, they estimate about 70,000 of actual stone tombstones. So it's huge. And it's not yet catalogued completely which is uh, maybe uh, an interesting thing for, let's say, uh, VG2. In terms of methodology, um, I tried to identify artists and artworks that were inspired by stage C, but I excluded applied artists, designers, fashion, you know, jewelry, souvenirs, and so on, and tried to look at those distinctive ones, uh, pure artists and representing uh, both literary, visual, and performing arts. And then I extracted uh, sort of, of metadata into Excel sheet, uh, having an artist name, the artwork, and then inspiration, again, categorized into some aspect of stage C, or myth surrounding, stories surrounding these tombstones, or artists that are within the same group of those inspired by uh, stage C. So these data are then entered into a spreadsheet. They were required, uh, they were converted into this required format for use of Palladio. And maybe this is good for everybody here to know that Palladio is uh, a really very user-friendly, very simple open source um, program developed by Stanford University, especially for digital humanities. So you can do spatial, temporal, relational analysis and so on, it's easy to use. So uh, after quantitative analysis, uh, the, the goal was to do some, uh, to produce some visuals, relational maps and graphs. And then interpret what these mean. Okay, so this is the original, um, output from, from this uh, Palladio uh, analysis, and the darker dots uh, represent liter literary artworks, uh, visual artworks, and performing artworks. 
and the, uh, the lighter one are aspects that serve as inspiration. So if you can see Stechak, uh, or stage C was inspi uh, inspired all three types of arts, but there is one interesting thing that artists also inspired other artists, and to a certain extent, myths surrounding uh, were also inspiration to performing arts. Now, this, this is just a quantitative analysis, so it's not that uh, telling. So what I did, uh, I turned this into infographics, um, just uh, replacing these uh, circles with actual uh, works. Not all of them, but some of them. So for instance, you can see that, is it? you can see that Stechak materiality, the stone, was continually insp inspiration for a sculpture. The reason is the longevity. You know, they, they want that to last. The word, uh, how this one artist said, I want uh, my ideas to be written in stone. And then uh, the, uh, the decoration in terms of color, a circle dance, served uh, as inspiration to musicians. So they, they, they did some, uh, musical pieces based on this circle dance. Myths about uh, dragons were very much uh, inspiration to filmmakers. So there is a, a award-winning combined animation and real uh, acting uh, film called, uh, called Dragon, um, which, uh, which talks about this a story about uh, fighting between the black and the white, the good and the bad. Uh, again, religious um, evil are very present in these new uh, works because Bosnia is mid between east and west and there is always some sort of evil that it has to fight. So Satan is representing evil and there is a ballet uh, called Satan that was inspired by this. But the most important person is actually a poet. A poet who was inspired by uh, inscription, the epitaphs on the, on the uh, uh, stage tzi. And they talk about harsh but proud people. So harsh land, living harsh lives, but very proud. So he was really the most important one, although there are not many literary works, he is very important because he inspired both visual artists and performing artists. So musicians composed some pieces of music based on his poetry and uh, visual artists weaved the words together with images into their tapestries. Now, it's interesting that uh, this tapestry is chosen, not a painting, oil painting, or, or something else, but tapestry, because of that weaving technique and the wool, and even, even the process is hard. So, so that's how they, uh, how would I say, that's how they see their, their land and themselves harsh, proud, lasting, but also uh, wanting to have fun and dance and, and fight evil. So this is how, uh, in this analysis, um, the link between archeology span and um, art seem to say. So, uh, the main, uh, again, to just uh, repeat, the main reason for artistic engagement was their wish to express what their land means to them. And then they achieved this uh, by uh, recuperating the wisdom of the past and then in defining and refining its elements uh, through their own artistic imagination. Uh, this is a short presentation, but I have 
a couple of papers done uh, on these similar topics. So there is uh, one uh, chapter in a book, uh, Transferring Cultural Knowledge Through Arts to Digital Stories. That is a book that was uh, recently published by Springer. Uh, there is also a recent uh, um, conference paper that looks at um, knowledge discovery from arts data, but uh, um, in a music sense, so it's a case of distant listening. And then uh, there is one that is also available on Research Gauge, picturing the past, a case on knowledge management application in archaeology. Now, uh, knowledge management in terms, in, in, in this terms, uh, knowledge discovery is particularly important. But uh, there are other terms that are related to this in other areas. For instance, in literary and linguistic uh, uh, circles, they call it distant uh, reading. And uh, in uh, IT, they call it big data. So it's all the same name, a different, sorry, different name for the same thing. What is important, we use statistical analysis to discover some patterns. And then maybe find some good way of visually presenting those patterns for human consumption. And that's me.